Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today to talk about all things solar. So what I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee and buckle up and get ready to learn about what the real deal is with solar. And what I hope you guys will do is before you go out and spend money on a home solar panel system, you'll watch this video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the physics of how a solar panel works. Then I'm going to go through the practical aspects about having solar panels at home. Do they technically work? For home operation and then the third thing I'm going to do is look and see do they economically work for home installations why am I qualified to talk about this well not to brag but I do have a master's degree in electrical engineering with a emphasis in solid state physics from Stanford University secondly 12 years ago I installed a five uh, a five kilowatt solar installation at my home so I have been enjoying solar energy for the last 12 years and so I can kind of go through the practical aspects of both the technical and the economics of it and before you invest in solar I hope you will watch this video so that you will know exactly what you are getting into so let me go in and just show you real quickly how solar panels work and uh Guys, I'll get through this really quickly because I know some of you that maybe are just tuning in to learn about solar, you don't care about this part. I'll try to get through it as quickly as I can, but I know a lot of you guys who are subscribers to my channel enjoy a little bit of solid state physics every once in a while. And what I will say is, is that solar panels really work exactly the same way that LEDs work, only they work backwards. And so this is a band diagram. This is is the conduction band and this is the valence band and what you know is the conduct the valence band is full of electrons and the conduction band is empty and if we operate this as an LED if I apply a voltage I will generate electron hole pairs and then those electron hole pairs will recombine and that will emit a photon and that's how we get light out of an LED. Well a solar panel is just like an LED only you're operating backwards and so what will happen is you put these things in the Sun and then this is I guess I should do a different color for my photons how about that uh, how about we use a different color for my photons I'll make the photons red okay so here is a photon and the photon is coming in and then it strikes the solar panel and when it strikes the solar panel it will take one of these electrons down here in the valence band and it will kick it up to the conduction band so now the electron is up here it leaves a hole down behind and then the electron rolls down this energy hill and that generates current okay and so you shine light on a solar cell it generates an electron hole pair the electrons ro roll downhill the holes roll uphill that generates a current you get a current off of your solar panels you put a load on it and that will generate a voltage so that is how an LED works it I mean that is how a solar panel works it is basically just operating an LED backwards that's the simple explanation okay so let's look at the practicality of it so I'm gonna try to answer the question now is technically in a practical sense will solar panels work at home over time so let me answer that 12 years ago i installed a 5 kilowatt solar system on my home and i have had that for 12 years and i've had no malfunctions all right the solar panels continue to work the inverter continues to work I've never had anything break I've never had to have anyone come out and fix it and so it is worked it is worked reliably and it is worked in a robust fashion now I will say that probably over time I have experienced uh, year after year after year somewhere maybe three percent to five percent degradation in energy output from these solar panels 
over time. So they do kind of over time begin to wear out. I don't know if it's just they're getting like maybe the covering on them isn't en letting enough light in or something changing inside. But but you could expect about three to five percent degradation in energy output per year over time. But I will say that I have monitored my overall output and I'll kind of go through those numbers with you. But let's sort, sort of talk about, uh, so technically does it work? Yes. Did anything ever break? No. I'm 12 years into it and I have had no technical problems at all. So let's look a little bit about the system that I have. I installed this in the year, uh, let's see here, let me clear that. I installed this in the year 2008. I installed 5,000 watt system. Okay. And at the time, the cost was $5 per watt. Okay. And therefore, my nominal turnkey installed cost and again this was installed by a professional installer who did everything to code and got my interconnect agreement with the utility provider with the electric provider did everything including installation parts labor everything and my turnkey cost for a 5000 watt system was twenty five thousand dollars okay now at the time i think i got about a 30 percent energy credit from the federal government so let me do a quick calculation here that was uh let's see twenty five thousand times 0.7 because of that rebate and so my uh turnkey cost it looks like was about seventeen thousand five hundred dollars okay so the first mistake people make when they're calculating solar they say oh well well i've got five thousand watts that's come you know that this thing can produce and let's say i have eight eight hours of sunshine i'm going to be making forty thousand watts a day but you see it doesn't work that way because you only get the five thousand watts when the sun is coming in directly on your solar panels when the sun is coming up Let's see, when the sun is coming up and hitting your solar panels at an angle, you don't get 5,000 watts out of it. And so you only get that 5,000 watts for a very small number of minutes during the day. And early in the morning, you get very little. And late in the day, you get very little. And so I'm just going to tell you practically what I have averaged over 12 years. I have averaged 32 kilowatt hours per day okay now because of the degradation over time early on i was getting a lot more than that and then later on i was getting less than that but over time i was getting 32 kilowatt hours per day out of these solar panels all right and so now let's look at that let's say that the average energy cost is going to be uh let's say the average energy cost in the united states so let's just say 12 cents a kilowatt hour okay so that would be 0.12 times 32 and that is saying that these solar panels were making i'm just going to approximate about four dollars in electricity per day for me all right four dollars of electricity per day for me and now let's see how many days i had them i had them 300 uh let's see i had them 365 days a year times 12 years okay so i've had them for th 4380 days times four dollars per day i have man this this is kind of funny uh it comes out to exactly today these things have generated seventeen thousand five hundred and twenty dollars worth of electricity for me so after 10 after uh after 12 years of use i have a net profit in these things of twenty dollars okay so that's a long time <laughs> that's a long time to manage a solar panel 
farm for a total profit of $20. But really it's better than that because you could say I've made $20 and at this point my solar panels are free. They've completely paid for themselves. So from here forward, as long as I have those solar panels, they will be, you know, completely free electricity that I'm getting off of them. And also it's like a capital asset. If I sell my house, my house is more valuable because it has those solar panels. So really it's kind of a lot better than, than what it looks like like there, but I, I made $20. What I have now is I have a completely paid for free set of solar panels. So if you just look at this, you could say, hey, solar kind of makes sense because you could also say, well, what else could I have done with that $25,000? Well, I could have put it in the bank, $25,000, and then I could earn 1% interest on it. So that would be 0.01. And so that would be $250 a year. I'm not going to worry about the, uh, the compounding. And I'm going to say, just say times 12. I understand things compound, but maybe, uh, maybe Maybe I would have made $3,000 in interest. Let me do that again. That doesn't sound right. 25,000 times 0 0.01 is $250. Okay, so so I could have made a couple of thousand dollars. I did way, way better having solar than if I would have just put the money in the bank. Okay, so solar kind of uh, technically makes sense because I've had them 12 years. Nothing is ever broken. And it kind of economically makes sense because it's better than putting your cash in the bank. And, uh, you know, it does sort of pay for itself for me after about 12 years. Now, what I got to say is these are just ballpark numbers for you it's gonna it's gonna vary right it's gonna depend on how much do the solar panels cost you how much sunlight do you get where you are how long are your days how hot is it there's all those sort of things but I'm just giving you a rough ballpark figure of maybe what you can expect with solar all right but so let's all run out and buy solar. Well, not so fast, because let me show you something, all right? This is what you have to understand about solar, and it is kind of the hidden pitfall of solar energy. And I'm having trouble finding my cursor here. Okay, so I am going to clear this. And this is what you've got to see on how solar works, because it's like, oh, okay, I use this much energy in my house and I'm producing this much. And so you kind of do this calculation based on how much energy I can produce per day versus how much I can use per day. And you decide, does it work or not? But it is not that simple. And I have to show you why. <clears throat> now, I will say, also, you know, how much energy your house uses, that can be a huge variation. But I'm just going to give you sort of a nominal case. I have a three bedroom house. All right. And it's very well insulated. So I have a modern, well insulated three bedroom house. And uh, I will use in the winter about 32 kilowatt hours per day because in the winter, you know, I'm uh, just running lights. You're not running the air conditioner. In the summer in Texas, it's hot. And so I would use more like 65 kilowatt hours per day. So in the winter with my system, I typically can have many months that I don't get an electric bill. I'm paying, you know, kind of like 100% of my electric usage from solar. But then in the summer, when you kick those air conditioners on, those are energy hogs. And then I will have an electric bill. So let's say in the winter, I have no electric bill. In the summer, I have an electric bill that is $100 a month instead of what it would be of $200 a month if I didn't have solar. Does that kind of make sense? All right. Your mileage is going to vary, but you got to at least sort of have an example that you can base these things on. But let me show you what the problem is. Okay. Let me show you what the problem is. All right. So I am going to try, I am going to try to draw a graph here with my graph tablet and this is going to be this is going to be time and this is going to be energy okay and I'm going to let's say red is what I use okay and let's say oh I think I'll use purple Purple is what I make. 
Okay, so red is what I use, and purple, let me make that use better. That is not very good. So red is what I use, and purple is what I make. Okay, so let's say that this is MN for midnight, okay, and then let's say this is noon, and then we come back to midnight. All right, and then just for fun, let's say that this is about 6 a.m., and then let's say this is about 6 p.m. Okay, so let me show you what energy I make. Now remember, just because it's light outside in the morning, that doesn't mean that you are making any electricity. You, well, you might make a tiny amount. The electricity that you make is maximized when the photons are coming straight in and hitting your solar panel like this. That is the middle of the day. So even though it might be it might be uh, light outside at 6 a.m., I am making almost no energy at all. And then out here at about noon, I am making all my energy, and then by 6 p.m., I'm not making energy at all again. And so your energy production would look something like this, if I can draw it. It comes up as sort of like an inverted parabola, and then it drops off very quickly. Okay, and then it is in here. If you integrate it under this curve, I am getting my 32 kilowatt hours. And so maybe the energy is in kilowatts, and then you integrate over time, and I get a production of 32 kilowatt hours. Oh man, I used the wrong color, didn't I? This is what I'm making. I'm going to have to adjust this over here. We can fix this really quickly. We will just say... We'll fix this. You guys should have yelled at me that I was using the wrong color. So this is what I make. Okay. And then this is what I use. Okay, so I've got make and use. Now, the thing that you got to see is that let's say uh, let's say in the winter time, let's just go winter time for right now to do the the calculation. That in winter time, I'm I'm using 32 kilowatt hours per day. Okay, but I want you to think about it. Okay, what happens at night? You're asleep. <laughs> at night you're asleep and the lights are off. How much energy are you using at night? Almost none. Well, that's good, okay, because it's dark and you're not really using hardly any energy at all, right? But I want you to think what happens. Let's say that you get up at 5 a.m. and between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m., you're kind of your family is up and getting ready for school. So what is going to happen? You get up and you're going to eat breakfast, so you turn the oven on. The oven is one of the largest energy hogs in your house. You're, you're making food on your stove. You're using a lot of energy. Hair dryers come on. Hair dryers are huge consumers of energy. Your toaster. What also, you might have an electric hot water heater. You're taking your shower. All right, you turn the lights on. Even though maybe the sun has come up, the lights are on in your house. So you have this huge peak of energy usage between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m. And then at 7 a.m., you, you leave the house, you turn the lights off, and you go back to almost no energy usage. And so what your energy usage would look like would be something like this. We're going to start at about Let's say this is about 5 and this is about 7. Your energy usage is going to look something like this. You're going to come up, you're going to use a whole lot of energy, and then you're going to come down. And you're not going to use very much during the day because you're only running your refrigerator. Okay, you're only running your refrigerator. And the thing is, your refrigerator doesn't use that much electricity if you're not opening the door. What you got to see is when you open the door, you let all the cold air out. Maybe you put something warm in it and close it, and then you start cranking up the motor on your refrigerator. So really, while your refrigerator is sitting there without people opening and closing the door, it doesn't use very much. Your lights are off because you're gone. Your house is not using very much electricity. But then everyone comes home at 5, and what happens? 
you turn the lights on, maybe there you turn the TVs on, maybe you start cooking, maybe there's some people that are taking showers in the evening, and so what happens? You use a bunch of electricity, and then overall, then as you start approaching midnight, people start going to bed, and it comes down like this. Okay, so the thing that I'm trying to show is is that the area under the purple curve for me is kind of like the area under the red curve. Okay, the area under the purple curve is kind of like the area under the red curve. At least that's what I what I was trying to draw, and therefore. In the winter time, <clears throat> I am making as much electricity as I am using. And that sounds good, right? That sounds really good. But then here is the problem. The problem is I am, I am, I am using it here and here, and I am making it here. And this is where we get into one of the largest fallacies of the solar industry and that is oh the power company has to pay you for your electricity or you go out and you see your electric meter spinning backwards not the case if you just go to the electric company and you get a normal electric plan from your electric company they are not required to pay you for the electricity that goes back on the grid because what you can see is between here and here I am putting energy back on the grid and so I am making 32 kilowatt hours per day which is what I'm using but if I just go and get a normal electric plan from a utility company what I am only going to benefit from is, I am only going to benefit from, this is my benefit. Let's see, I will try to do my benefit in, uh, in brown, okay? My benefit is, all right, this energy that I'm producing, I am using, and this energy that I am producing, I am using, okay? and this I am using and so this brown area is the only benefit that I get from solar okay and then all of this all of this here is given away given away to the electric company okay because your meter doesn't spin backwards all right, so if I have a 32 kilowatt system, if I just go and sign up with an electric company, maybe my system is 32 kilowatt hours per day, but my net benefit is 2 kilowatt hours per day. And so with this calculation, at 10 cents per kilowatt hour, this huge massive $25,000 investment is making what, is this right to 25 cents a day for me? Something like that? Okay, this is what's horrible, right? This is what's horrible. So then what that means is the only way that solar makes sense is if you get net metering, okay? net metering and what net metering is is that it is a meter okay it is a meter I'll try to draw a meter and what it does is it measures two things it measures what electricity is coming into your house and what what electricity is coming into your house and what electricity is going out of your house. All right, now what you are assuming is, is that you get net metering and there's what comes in and there's what goes out and what you owe is the difference between what comes in and what comes out. That is in general false. That is in general false because nowhere does it say, first of all, you've got to get net metering and nowhere does it say that they will pay you 
the same amount for what you're putting on the grid as what you're taking off. And so what a lot of energy providers will do is, let's say that over here, what you are using, they will charge you 12 cents per kilowatt hour and what you put back on they will pay you four cents okay so they charge you 12 cents for the electricity you're using and they only pay you four cents for what you put back on the grid this is what you would call a ripoff okay and so you cannot assume when you buy solar that you're going to get a fair deal from the electric company and that they are going to pay you the same as what they are charging you. So this is the first problem. Okay, the second problem is, let's say that you get, let's say, case two. Okay, so, so let's look at different cases. You know, case number one is you get nothing. You get nothing. You get nothing for what you put back on the grid. And this is the default position that if you just have an energy provider and you install solar, they give you nothing. Okay, let's look at case number two. This is net metering. But there is a delta between by and sell what they buy from you they pay you a lot less than what they're selling to you so then at that point the system doesn't make any sense at all and so then let's go to case number three and case number three is you have net metering net metering and you have you have buy you have buy and sell price the same. Okay, buy and sell price the same. So what they charge me for the electricity, what they charge me for the electricity here is the same as what they pay me when I am putting it back on the grid. And that says, oh, wow, that's what you want. Okay, but this is what you have to deal with there. And that is typically to get a fair net metering thing, they charge you a huge amount. And so it's not going to be like 12 or 8 or something like that. It is going to be 0.15 cents per kilo or 15 cents per kilowatt hour. And then they pay you 15 cents per kilowatt hour. And then you say, oh, great. OK, in the winter, I am making as much as I'm selling. And so even at 15 cents a kilowatt hour, I am not I have a net zero electric bill. That's great, right? Yeah. But in the summertime, what happens in the summertime? You turn the air conditioner on and now you have an additional 32 kilowatt hours per day okay and now that 32 kilowatt hours per day that's 32 and now instead of a normal electric rate where you would be paying eight cents a kilowatt hour you are paying 15 cents a kilowatt hour so that's 32 times 0.15 okay times 30 and so you have now a hundred and fifty dollar electric bill in the winter okay or in the summer you have a hundred and fifty dollar electric bill in the summer even though you are making all of this electricity because in the summer you are using more electricity in the summer during the day you have your air conditioner on and so you're coming down here like this and then going up like that so you're using all of this extra energy in the summer and then that extra energy that you are using you are getting reamed on from the electric company okay so let's look i'm in texas a great big huge state i should have all the modern conveniences this is what I could get electricity for right now in Texas. Okay, in Texas, I could get electricity for about eight cents per kilowatt hour. Eight cents per kilowatt hour. 
And I might be able to get six or seven cents if I really played the game of finding the best deal and, and really working the system. Okay, but just eight cents would be, be maybe a typical cost. All right, the best deal that I can get from someone who is offering net metering, the best deal that I can get is 0.15 cents per kilowatt hour. And so the problem is in the winter, I will still be having a zero electric bill, but in the summer, in the summer, when the air conditioner comes on, all of this excess energy that I am using, all of this excess energy that I am using, I am paying a total ripoff amount for. Okay, a total ripoff amount for. No one is offering eight cents and uh, no one is offering eight cents and net metering. Okay, so this is what you've got to see. The energy industry has conspired against allowing solar to work. Okay, so conspiracy theory, all right, you're saying I'm a conspiracy theorist, but let's look let me give you an example here let's see if i can come up with something here okay we are going to come over here and like the big solar energy provider the the guys in texas and in a lot of the country that offer net metering are green mountain energy okay so those are the guys who will give me this deal oh look affordable clean energy plans to meet your lifestyle help protect the environment we are 100 percent green oh look at this you go with green mountain energy and we give you green energy we give you solar and wind and we don't have a carbon footprint and we protect the world and look at us we're green mountain energy we're the solar guys we will pay you for your solar panels oh look at us right wonderful right but what they don't tell you is they are charging you a ridiculous amount for the energy if you want net metering now why would they do that why wouldn't they treat you fairly because they're paying the same amount for energy as anybody else so why are they going to screw the guy with the solar panels because they're supposed to be the green guys shouldn't be they be the ones giving the best net metering deal so that everyone could go to solar and we would have this clean environment. Well, let's look into it a little bit deeper and let's look at who owns, uh, who owns, let's just look at that. Let's say who owns Green Mountain Energy. Let's look who owns Green Mountain Energy. Oh, Green Mountain Energy is a wholly owned subsidiary of NRG. I don't know what NRG stands for, but NRG is the big, ugly power company that has this little fake front of Green Mountain Energy. And so let's look at NRG. NRG is involved in energy generation and retail electricity. Their portfolio includes nuclear, coal, wind, utility, utility uh, natural gas. And so these are the big, dirty, coal-fired generators. That company owns Green Mountain Energy that they put out as their little front. Now, do you think NRG wants solar panels? No, they want coal power. They want nuclear power. They want natural gas. Well, how can they kill solar? By having this happy little green mountain energy, right? Having this happy green mountain energy that screws the solar in industry. Do you see how that works? Do you see how that works? So, what choices do I have in Texas to get net metering? I have the choice of Green Mountain Energy or Reliant Energy. Well, let's look at Reliant Energy. Let's see. Let's say, who owns Reli Re Reliant Energy? Who owns Reliant Energy? Uh, let's see. Oh my goodness, look at that. 
NRG owns Reliant Energy as well, okay? Do you see that? So I have two choices for net metering. Reliant Energy, owned by this coal-fired coal company, and Green Mountain Energy, owned by this coal-slash-nuclear energy. Do you see, guys? It's rigged. It's rigged. Solar makes sense technically. Solar makes sense physics. But they've got the industry you know, the coal industry, the nuclear industry has been able to turn it where you cannot afford to have solar panels at home in this type of environment. Now, you might be thinking, if you are an analytic type person, you might be thinking then this is the answer. Okay, this is the answer. So what you could do, uh, let's see if I can come down here. I'm going to see if I can erase this. Let me make my eraser bigger so it'll go faster. Okay, so let's say what you could do is, all right, I am just going to bite the bullet. I am going to bite the bullet, and I am going to install twice as much. I'm going to install twice as much solar. Okay, so now what I produce is going to be like this. Okay, it's going to be like this. And therefore, in the winter, when my usage, or in the summer, when my usage is like this in the summer, I am going to be producing enough that even in the summertime, I've doubled the size of my system. And in the summertime now, I am making the same amount as I'm using. And so I don't care what they charge me, that, that, that as long as I'm making what I'm using, then it doesn't matter what they're charging me because I'll net out to zero. But this is what you've got to see is, okay, now let's say that you double the size of your system. And I will admit that prices vary across the country. But now we are going to get a 10000 Watt. Let me get out of your way a little bit more here. We are going to get a 10,000 watt system. We're going to get a 10,000 watt system. And so let's say now that we are looking at an out of pocket of about $50,000. Now, I think still there might be like a 20% credit that you can get from the government. So let's say 50,000 times 0.8. Let's say uh, 50,000, I am having trouble with the calculator, 50,000 times 0.8, I should have been able to do that. That is about, where is my cursor? That is after your tax credit, let's say it would be $40,000. Okay, $40,000. And then let's say even now you might be able to get solar a little less than this. And so let's say that you could get something for $30,000 that could maybe run your house and then uh, even in the summertime generate as much electricity as you're using. This is, this is the problem though. What keeps them is everybody goes out and does this to try to adapt their solar system to the ripoff deal that they're getting from uh, places like Green Mountain Energy. What's going to happen? They're just going to change the rules again. Okay, because when I bought my solar panels, let's say that uh, electricity normally was eight cents a kilowatt hour and in my net metering plan I was getting charged nine cents a kilowatt hour and so therefore it economically made very very good sense but then after I spend all the money on the solar panels they change the rules and instead of charging eight cents a kilowatt hour they go to 15 cents a kilowatt hour and all of a sudden the equation changes the problem is if you invest the thirty thousand to fifty thousand dollars in the solar installation and they change the rules again maybe they just say hey no net metering <laughs> because if they say no net metering then all of a sudden all of this energy, all of this energy that you are making, they get for free and nothing requires them to give you net metering. Nothing requires them to give you a fair deal in net metering. And unfortunately, 
I think early on, as the solar energy, uh, solar industry was developing, there seemed to be legislative help. It seemed like the government was trying to encourage the use of solar energy. But then all of a sudden, things just got really quiet. And how come, like, the state utilities boards don't require uh, electric providers to give you net metering and give you a fair deal net metering they just kind of stepped out of the way and so at that point i think that solar does not make sense i can make it work for you today on paper if i go through the numbers but the problem is as soon as you spend that huge amount of money there's nothing that protects you from the rules changing again so what i would say is uh let's kind of get back let's get to the bottom line does, does solar technically work? Yes. Is it technically feasible and reliable? Yes. I've had solar panels for 12 years. They performed perfectly. Can I recommend that you buy solar? No, I can't because it doesn't really work economically. And even if you can make it work by sizing your system perfectly, they'll change the rules on you again. Green Mountain Energy, rip off, rip off. Okay. It's a fake front for a large electric company that uses coal-fired plants, natural gas-fired plants, and nuclear energy. And that is the bottom line. Okay, guys, leave me a comment down below. Did you find this interesting? I just, I just find technical stuff in, in, interesting. And let me know what you think. Uh, let me know your, 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 your thoughts on this. This is a, a topic a little bit different than some of the stuff I usually do. But I just found it interesting, and I thought you guys might enjoy it. Okay, guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.